Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Serena and I film videos from fashion and beauty to productivity and lifestyle, so definitely subscribe if you haven't already. But today, as you can probably tell by the title, this video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm here in my brand new 2022 Mazda CX-30. It's a small SUV and I've had it a little bit over two months now, so I feel like I've finally gotten the hang of all the cool features and I can't wait to share with you what I love about this car. If you guys are just interested in the car tour, go ahead and skip along. I just thought I'd give you a little bit of backstory so that you guys can see kind of the process of me getting my brand new car. The car that I had before this one was a Fiat 500C 2014. So it's definitely a little bit of an older car. It was my very first car that I bought on my own and I loved it. But I definitely knew that I wanted to upgrade to a bigger car with more space. I've had my eyes set on the Mazda SUVs for a couple years now and coming up to this year the car market as we know has been so crazy and used cars are going for so much so I thought I would trade in my car before it started having even more issues than it already did so I decided to go with the Mazda CX-30 it's kind of in between the Mazda CX-3 and the Mazda CX-5 in terms of size but it has a lot of like the luxury details in the car which I definitely loved and felt like I wanted to go with so I decided to trade in my car I got an awesome deal on it and then I decided to go ahead and lease this car I'm leasing this car for three years so 36 months and I can use up to 30,000 miles so that equates to about 10,000 a year and I'm definitely driving a lot less than that right now since I am working from home but I wanted to take advantage of getting my car traded in for a good price and then if I do decide that I really like this car I can still buy it after the lease but I'm so excited it's a brand new car I feel so blessed that I'm able to do this so yeah that's a little bit of backstory on the car so without further ado let's get into the tour okay so I first wanted to show you the outside of the car as you can see I got the color white I believe the color name is the snowflake pearl Mika and it's a really cool color it's not just white I don't know if you can see very well but there's kind of like a metallic shimmer in the paint which I really love it has the standard like Mazda grill which I love has gray metallic rims and I will just insert some b-roll to show you all of that as you can see it's a pretty good size I definitely didn't want anything bigger than this like the Mazda CX-5 and I feel like I made a really good choice one really cool feature that I definitely didn't have in my Fiat was the keyless entry so if you just grab the handle it will unlock the car as you can see and then if you want to lock the car you can also just tap here and that's gonna lock the car as well which I think is really really cool so this is what the inside looks like I apologize if it's a little noisy I definitely knew for my next car that I wanted to get leather seats so these have a leatherette seats um, all throughout the car and then this is like the steering wheel area steering wheel is leather as well and then this leather kind of continues onto the door panels which is a really nice feature um, so we have like leather material all throughout okay so now that we're inside the car I just kind of want to go over some of the cool features that it has and things that I've learned since getting it so the car is keyless entry and then it also has start stop and that turns on the car, which is really cool. And so as you can see here, the dash is all digital in the center. It shows a little car there, um, which is cute, but it's also very functional. This car has blind spot monitoring, so anytime someone's in your blind spot, it will actually show exactly where the person is in your blind spot on this little diagram so that's a handy tool and then it just shows miles per hour rpm the gear that it's in and then this little symbol just shows that blind spot monitoring is on and if you want to turn that off there's a button for it right there and it'll show that it's currently off that's really cool this is also where you can use cruise control and so we go on to the steering wheel it just has music controls here volume um, skipping these are the call buttons right here and then info 
just allows us to change the diagram. So if you prefer it to be a standard view or need more information about miles per gallon, that's there. If you click it again, you go back to the view that I normally have it on, which is just the digital screen. I find that it's a lot easier um, to watch speed like this. And then on the right side of the steering wheel, these are the cruise control controls. Okay, so I clicked cruise control. And something really cool about this car is that it actually has adaptive cruise control. So these buttons here show how much distance you want between you and the other cars. You can adjust that however much you feel comfortable with. Just a side note, I actually just got back last weekend from a road trip to Arizona. And so I used the adaptive cruise control and it was really cool. If you don't know what adaptive cruise control is, it slows down and speeds up based on how far your car is from the other cars. The only thing that I noticed was on like windy turns, it would sometimes confuse the car in the lane next to me and think that it was in front of me so it starts slowing down on those turns. Other than that, I think it worked really good. I definitely wouldn't use the adaptive cruise control if you're in like a lot of traffic or like windy roads, but other than that, it worked really great. So I think that completes everything on the steering wheel and dash. On this side, we just have the blinkers and over here, as I mentioned, this is just to turn off the blind spot or traffic alert monitoring. Here we have an off-roading button. This car comes with all-wheel drive, but it only kicks in when you're on kind of like a rough terrain. So it's front-wheel drive, but it can turn into all-wheel drive on certain terrain. I haven't personally used the off-roading button yet. Down here, I have the seat setting. So the seats are electric controlled, and so you can save your seat position. So I think I have my fiance's here. <laughs> so you can see I moved. And then to go to mine, you just click it which is pretty cool. And then down here, I'm not sure what this is. I usually leave like a mask in here. I think it's for like coins or something. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a neat little pocket. I feel like some people might not even know <laughs> that that's there. Being on this way, before I show you guys the infotainment system, I wanna show you the controls for it. So Mazda is kind of staying away from doing a touchscreen infotainment system. So all of the controls for the infotainment system is down here. Down here in the middle console, we have a little space to put things i usually put my keys there we have two cup holders and then this is kind of like the prindle station <laughs> shout out if you know what the prindle is we have a sport mode button here which i really don't use often we have an electronic parking brake which is really handy i love that it doesn't have the pull one so my other car definitely did have that and then it has auto hold and this is a really really cool feature it allows you to have the brake engaged without you putting it into park so if you have auto hold on you just press the brake and then if you're going through a drive-thru anytime you press the brake it will hold the brake for you which has been a lifesaver this is the knob that we use to control the infotainment system and it has a few buttons here. This is for navigation, which this trim did not come with navigation. We have a music button, and then we have a home button and a back button. And then right here, we this is another volume control, so you can turn your music on and off, skip songs, and this just turns and goes forward and backwards. Star is for favorites, so if you wanna save anything to your favorites, you can just hit that button, which is really cool. And then moving up to the infotainment system, it has, this is really the home screen. If you hit the home button again, you can get to just where it shows the clock, which is pretty cool. But if we want to scroll through, we just have information. This gives digital information on the car, such as fuel efficiency or vehicle status. Then we have entertainment. This car comes with Bluetooth enabled, so I just hook up my phone to the Bluetooth and it will automatically play my music. We have communication. Um, anytime you get a text message, it will pop up here on the infotainment system and read you your text message, which is really neat. And you can also use the dial pad to call anyone from here. Navigation, my car did not come with navigation, but it is Apple CarPlay compatible. So I just use my maps. And then these are just general settings, such as an vehicle display, sound settings. This one's really cool because you can actually turn down the volume of your warnings. So the blind spot monitoring that I was mentioning earlier, you can choose how loud you want those warnings to be. We have safety settings. This allows you to choose what you want 
it to kind of alert you on. It has rear cross traffic alerts, so it will warn me if someone's crossing when I am reversing. And then it also has lane departure warning system, which just tells the car when I'm veering off the lane. The steering will actually vibrate and it will also alert me with a beep. And then blind spot monitoring, which I also mentioned. But yeah, those are just a few features that I have found that I really love with this car. The vehicle settings, you can choose which doors lock when you press the button once. Oh, another thing is it has rain sensing wipers. So if it starts raining and you have the wipers on auto, it will actually turn on by itself, which I think is really cool. And then just connectivity settings. It even comes with Wi-Fi, I think, so you can up to your car and then lastly system settings which I honestly don't use too much and that's pretty much it for all of the features on the home screen as I mentioned before the car does come with Apple CarPlay compatibility okay so I just hooked up my phone as you can see my phone knows that it's hooked up to CarPlay and then we also have the option on the infotainment screen for CarPlay and so to access that all I do is hit the knob, right? And then it automatically pops up. And then to go to your apps, you can just go down, select this, and this will give you kind of like your phone view. If you need to access anything else, I really only use it for maps, calling, and music. So that's really all that I use it for, but you can definitely check out what else you're able to use with Apple CarPlay. Okay, so moving on from that, right here, this is something I haven't shown yet, but this is usually where like radio buttons would be, but as I mentioned, those are all located down here. So this is purely for climate control. I really like that there are dual controls, so this side vents can have you know, different temperature than this side. We have adjustment controls for the air, things like that. And then one additional thing we have here is the heated seats button. I knew that going into car shopping that I wanted a car with heated seats. The way that the CX-30s work is you can purchase a higher trim to get heated seats and this trim is called Preferred. So it came with heated seats, leatherette seats, and then it also came with a sunroof. So let me show you that. So this is kind of the upper side of the car. Um, we have lights here, buttons for lights, and then we also have the sunroof. So I'm just gonna hit this. And isn't that nice? <laughs> so I definitely wasn't trying to find a car with a sunroof, but because I wanted the heated seats, this trim also came with a sunroof, which was really awesome. And I feel like I've definitely gotten a lot of use out of it. So definitely recommend. And then the last thing up here is just this. This is a sunglasses holder, which is really convenient. And then moving right along, um, this is kind of the center console storage and it slides so you can get stuff in and out. You can also open it. And here I just have my keychain, a few chargers, some hand sanitizer, my coin pouch, and a pen. Keep it pretty simple in here. And then on the passenger side, we have the under the dash storage which just has things like my registration in it and then i also just recently got this little trash can for the car from amazon and it came with trash bags which is really awesome so i've been loving that and then lastly we have the back seat so i'll just give you a quick overview of that okay so this is what the back seat looks like it has just three seats back here it's a pretty good size for being i think it's called like a subcompact suv i honestly don't have too many people back here so all of this is empty and clear one really cool thing about mazda is this is actually the first i think it's called subcompact suv correct me if i'm wrong that's the first small suv that has vents in the back seat which is really awesome i definitely don't have kids yet but I do have a dog so whenever she's back here I definitely appreciate having those extra vents on hot days here in the middle seat we have the cup holders so they just go down like that and then you have two cup holders okay last but not least we have the trunk and the latch for the trunk is just here as you can see there's so much space in this trunk this is something that I was really excited for um, coming from a Fiat with just a bucket trunk. So I absolutely love all the space. I have a trunk organizer back here, which just holds all of my stuff um, and still has a lot of room around it to put other things that don't fit in here. 
I love this. I got it from Amazon. I just have a license plate holder in here. I'm waiting for my permanent plates to come in. So once those come in, I'll go ahead and switch out the one that came with the car and put on this one. Just have a few car cleaning supplies that I carry. That's pretty much all I have for this side. And then on this side, this is where I keep my dog seat covers. It's kind of like a hammock that goes in the back seat here. And so this prevents her fur from getting all over the place. Um, so I always keep that here in the back and then I'll put it up when she's going to the park or whatever it is she does. And then lastly for the trunk, it has a lock button here so you can actually lock this and pull this handle down and that's that. So I think that completes the car tour. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you have any questions that I can answer definitely leave them in the comments down below. I definitely wanted to make this video in case any of you guys are planning on looking into or purchasing a Mazda CX-30. I honestly really love it and it was a really nice upgrade from my previous car. I think it comes with a lot of cool features um, considering the price point and if you're looking for a small SUV this might be the one for you. Thank you again for watching if you're interested in seeing any of my other content make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you guys next time